Welcome back to Gordon's Views and Reviews, where we look at everything from world politics to how my grass is growing. Today I have something a little different for you. It's a bit of a rant, a bit of a review. So let's get right into it. We recently returned from a family camping trip to Bruce Peninsula National Park, and I wanted to share some of our experiences and thoughts with you. We have some friends who live a couple of doors from us and whose daughter our children play with. During the past year of the pandemic, because of their isolation from others due to homeschooling and parents working at home and our similar schooling and work arrangements, they have been able to play safely together. A couple of years ago, they talked about wanting to go camping, and since they knew we were experienced campers, they approached us. But then last year, everything was pretty much shut down. As things began to open up this spring, and we knew all of us who could be vaccinated who would be vaccinated, we decided to go camping together. When the Bruce Peninsula National Park opened their website to take reservations in mid-April, we were fortunate enough to book two campsites side by side so the kids could play together and we could enjoy campfires even in the evening together. The day we left was sunny and clear, perfect for our 10-hour trip to Bruce Peninsula. We left early and arrived early enough to set up and have dinner before dark. We didn't bother with a campfire as everyone was tired from the long drive. We found the showers and although the water in the sinks was almost scalding, none of us could find a shower with even warm water, let alone hot. One interesting note. When we registered and checked in at the park office, we were told there was a bear currently in the campground and we were reminded to not leave food out. Everything was to be kept in the car. This bear had been active in the campground for a while now, but had not been a problem so far. More on this later. The rain started around 3 a.m. and continued until about 8 a.m. We awoke to a fairly muddy campsite with several puddles near the car and a few near the tent. But our tent was dry and our uh, gazebo provided a dry cooking and right? eating area. Our did friends also know? reported oh. being dry, but their campsite was also muddy with several large puddles. Overnight, they had heard snorting and huffing just outside their tent that they feel was likely the bear that we had been warned about. We had a few things to deal with in the morning, so we didn't make it into Tobermory until about one o'clock. What a pretty little town. Everything centered uh, on the uh, Little Tub Harbor. We checked out most of the tourist shops and had ice cream and booked a cruise to Flower Pot Island for the following Tuesday. We spent the next few days playing in the lake and letting the kids learn how to use the kayak. Later, we explored the lake a bit with the kayaks. The next day, Saturday, it rained off and on most of the day. My wife was very nervous about the bears in the area, especially if we were going to go hiking through the woods to any of the attractions along Georgian Bay. We had searched everywhere in or near Tobermory for bear spray, but with no luck. One place we had tried had suggested an outfitter about an hour away might have some, so I phoned to confirm before committing the two hours on the road. I asked them to hold it and said we would be there in about an hour. What they had was a compressed air horn, not bear spray. Oh, said the sales clerk, that's all anyone around here ever uses. Just make a loud noise and the bears will run away. I even have these whistles that will do the job. He placed two small metal tube-shaped whistles on the counter. Although I was a little upset that I had driven an hour for something readily available five minutes from the campsite, 
I decided to buy the two whistles. They were a dollar each. When I returned to the car and explained what had happened to my wife, she asked how loud the whistles were. I put one to my lips and I blew. It was pitiful and she started to laugh. She said she could just picture the bear laughing so hard if someone blew that whistle to try and frighten him that he would be incapable of attacking anything. The rain continued off and on as we drove back to the park. As we approached the park, there was a heavy down downpour that let up just as we neared Little Cove. So I thought we might get a parking spot at this very popular space. And there, indeed, were some spots. There were only a handful of cars. We walked down to the cove, about half a kilometer along the path. What a beautiful sight. A round stone beach sloping steeply down to crystal clear waters with rocky tree-lined shores stretching out on either side. I knew immediately I had to return with the kayak. It rained again that night, a lot. We had lots of puddles and a pond near the back of the car that was lapping toward the tent. But the rain was very light now and forecast to stop shortly with a promise of clear skies for the next six or seven days. We decided to go back into Tobermory and let things dry out as the day cleared. We returned to our campsite about 4.30 to find that our pond had turned into a rather large lake, more than ankle deep. There was water in the tent and our gazebo was completely flooded. And to make matters worse, the water was still flowing into our campsite from the two campsites across the road and probably several other places. I went to the park office to ask for help draining or diverting the water. Several people came down with shovels, but quickly declared there was nothing they could or would do. I asked if they had a pump, but they said they did not. I said that surely this could not be the first time this had happened, but I was told it only ever happened in the spring when the snow was melting. They said the only other time this site had flooded was in 1936. The park did not open until 1983. The supervisor suggested we could wait for the water to go down in hopefully a day or two, or they would find us a new site and help us move. The site they offered was quite a distance from our friends, and I suggested that there was an empty site across from our friends and another just a couple of sites away. But they said there was no way we could have either of them. They said our friends could move too, they would help, and they offered us a pair of sites at the other end of the campground. Both were too small, and one was still very, very wet. It was obvious our only choice was to move to the first site they had offered. I told them we would move, and they printed up the new permits for us. You've got to keep the paperwork in order. I said we would go and prepare things for the move, and could they please send the truck and the helpers that they had promised. By the time we had everything ready, the helpers had still not arrived, so I went back up to the office to see how long they would be, as it was now very close to sunset. I was told that nobody would be coming to help us. It was against their policies, and we should not have been told there would be help. I pointed out that if we had known that earlier, it might have influenced our decision to move. How, I asked, are we to move a wet tent, the fly, the ground sheet, and a wet gazebo. The car was already full of things that had been removed from the tent for the short move, and we had no place to put all the wet gear. When they suggested they could give us some plastic garbage bags to put the wet things in, I walked away. Back at the campsite, the neighbors volunteered to help us pick up the tent and carry it assembled to the new site. So six of us each grabbed a pole and away we went down the road. 
We moved the gazebo as well and had everything set up again by 10 o'clock. Our friends had prepared a pasta dinner for us and we gathered round their campfire to relax and vent our frustration. The new site was a much better and larger site overlooking the lake. The only issue was its distance from our friend's campsite. With bears in the campground, we were not completely comfortable letting the kids wander to and fro. Over the next few days, we watched our old campsite. It took a couple of days to drain completely, and another couple of days before most of the mud dried. As we moved around the campground, we noticed there were several other sites that were, if not flooded, still very wet. In conversation with the summer students working for Parks Canada, we learned that this flooding happens every time there is a couple of days of rain. Apparently, they have been trying to get permission to correct the drainage issue, but the various federal government departments involved have not yet been able to agree on what should be done. Perhaps if they spend a couple of rainy days on these flood-prone sites, they could agree on a solution. In the meantime, Bruce Peninsula National Park should close the sites they know will flood. They should not, under any circumstances, continue to rent out these sites, knowing they will flood when, not if, it rains. We really enjoyed our time at this national park. We've camped in several national parks and lots of provincial parks. We are experienced campers, and we know things can get wet when it rains. We have learned ways of dealing with it. Our concern here is that our site and others are known to flood if it rains heavily for a couple of days. Drainage is not something that is very difficult to resolve, and it has not been an issue in any other park we have ever camped in. It must be addressed at Bruce Peninsula National Park. One last comment. The staff at the park were wonderful. They were always friendly, always willing to help, especially those who are not completely aware of the park policies. Please don't misunderstand anything that I've said throughout this video. We had a great time at Bruce Peninsula National Park. The, the staff were wonderful with the exception of dealing with our flood. Um, I think that's, that's a, an issue that they really, really need to address. But this, this is a beautiful, beautiful area of, of the country. I would highly recommend visiting this area. I don't hesitate in, in recommending Bruce Peninsula National Park. Just be very careful that you don't get a low-lying site. This is the whistle that I bought. This is what it sounds like. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative. I hope this helps if you're if you're heading in that direction. I look forward to seeing you soon. Stay safe. Take care. This is the whistle that I bought. This is what it sounds like.